Today on Dingleberries and Klingons, we take a look at two special balls of human poo. One thinks he's the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. And the other thinks he's outsmarted an astronomer. Which one wins the smelliest poo award? Stick around to find out. Today's Dingleberries and Klingons is brought to you by channel members and patrons alike. To contribute to the show, click that join button or head over to www.patreon.com slash the plot hole one. That's the number one, not the loneliest number you can ever do. Rack focus. Hey everybody, Johnny O from the Plot Hole. Today we're going to take a Charmin extra strong wipe at two incredibly malodorous pieces of human excrement. Word of the day, toilet paper is coming handy. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Our first fart box smelling dolt believes himself to be the second coming of Jesus. I'm not kidding. This one's already starting out terribly. I mean, there's a whole bunch of words and reading that I'm not gonna subject you through. We'll speed through that really quick. But to summarize, this guy believes he's the second coming of Jesus, and he also believes that QAnon should be ashamed for not recognizing his messiahhood. And here I thought that QAnon had gone off the deep end. When the craziest of crazies calls you crazy, it's beyond time to reevaluate your bullshit. Look at this beautiful Virginia countryside. And not only in Virginia, I mean, America's beautiful, it's beautiful in many places. Sorry for the audio here. He's got his music way too loud for whenever his mouth isn't directly eating the microphone. I mean, we're not going to judge him for that one here. It's not like we've ever made that mistake. Blasting the Rockies, desert, Arizona, California coast. You know, everywhere is beautiful. I mean, God really blessed America and you guys know it too I mean just the whole diversity of nationalities the melting pot of it would make sense that this would be the country that God blesses in these end times because he wanted all nations all races to get together and to get along and kind of like a, a little precursor for the kingdom you know what I mean America is like a little precursor for the kingdom and different races Diversity. Everybody's getting along. Peace. Utter peace. Yeah. Everyone is getting along here in America. There's no racial divide or political unrest state to state. As a matter of fact, we all sit around the campfire and sing Kumbai fucking ya right before we all have one big giant cuddle in bed before we sleep. And uh, you would think that... If, if God was actually to come back again, you know, as a quote human, you would think that uh, the leaders, the founders of, not the founders, but the leaders of America would, would really express their appreciation and gratitude for how I have blessed this beautiful country. I was born here. I love America. I love it. Yep, you heard him. This bag of tools thinks he's God. And he has personally blessed all of us with America. I mean, if I were the son of the Almighty, yeah, I'd probably request not to be born in the middle of the desert again. I mean, after all that, you know, Jesus went through with the nails in his hand and his feet, stabby stabby in the side and the crown of thorns and the whole crucifixion thing. Yeah, God, I think you owe me one. Put me in someplace nice. Give me some rich white family. Chicago native, you know, love it. Wisconsin, God's country in Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin. Isn't that beautiful up there? Oh, unbelievable. But you would think they would express some type of gratitude. Appreciation, right? Appreciation. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. No, you see, the United States government actually sent God to prison, to federal prison for 33 months. Oh, this is getting good where I experienced suffering, hardship. It was, it was not easy, it was not fun. No, it's kind of ironic though, isn't it? 
I mean, seems to be par for the course, really. I mean, after a crucifixion, what's a little jail time? Just because I, I typed a silly little innocuous internet thread against that president. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, ooh, I know this one. It would be Barack Obama. Damn it, you didn't give me time to answer. What a piece of shit. It's just the fucking top of this fucking ugly, disgusting ass. We're talking about child pedophilia. Alleged, anyway. Of course, Jesus here is a QAnon believer. You know, if you really are God and child exploitation really bothers you, as it should bother all of us, then why don't you Thanos that stuff away? I mean, you're all powerful, right? Hang on. If you're God and you're all good, you can only do good, then why do we have to deal with this situation in the first place? Hmm. Child pedophilia? Clinton, Hillary, and, and Obama, Bill and Hillary. And you, that's like disgusting. You, you, that's the most thing anybody can ever do. Is torture, sexually torture children. Child trafficking, drug smuggling, bushes aren't involved in that too. That's Good Lord. I mean, I'm sorry, good you. But you sure do seem to spit a lot of conspiratorial nonsense. You have any evidence of these atrocious crimes that you allege? Any evidence? So, in the same times, I would think that there'd be some kind of payback, some kind of retribution for the wrongs that the government of beautiful, blessed America did to God. God blessed them. I blessed America, and they turned around and threw me in prison. That was extremely wrong of the government. They should have thrown you in a mental health institution so you could seek extreme psychiatric therapy. Did you read, did you, did you read a scripture that says, vengeance is mine, say the Lord? Well, there's gotta be a reason and initiative for me to feel like I need to be inclined to carry out some type of vengeance. And this is why you went to prison. Seriously, this guy is so unhinged. Now, when everybody asks me why I bother with all these flat earth nonsense, QAnon, this, that, and the other, and, and, and get into this whole conspiracy theory debunking, this is the reason why. You have people like this who are easily influenced, and when they hear some of this atrocious and just off the wall crazy stuff, they do bad things. This guy went to prison for it because he made a simple little thread on the internet. I mean, come on. You threatened the president of the United States. Did you not think you were going to go to jail? The fact that you don't think that was wrong. Oh, it's just crazy. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. These conspiracies have to be addressed and shown what they are. There's nothing more than the ramblings of crackpots. Speaking of crackpot ramblings, before we move on, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It really does help me out, and I truly appreciate it. Moving on. I'm willing to bet the PhD had plenty of answers for you, but you only cherry picked the parts that further bolstered your position. Any takers? Well, I should probably introduce the next Charlie and the Chocolate Factory reject. Noodle for Brains Nathan Thompson here thinks that he's outsmarted a PhD. This video starts out with a conversation between two former YouTubers talking about their flat earth nonsense. I'll speed it up so you don't waste your time. Yeah, I think, um, you know, people that, that first hear encounter flat earth, they all say, well, I once believed that it was a stupid idea, but I tried to refute it and I couldn't. <laughs> Well, that's because you didn't go to the right sources. You went on the internet and you heard these arguments from flat earthers that you couldn't answer. Yeah. Uh, that's because you didn't know the answers. I know the answers. I haven't encountered an argument yet I couldn't refute. Seems like a perfectly reasonable point. All flat earthers' methods of research consist of YouTube videos and confirmation bias. So how do you have gas pressure without a container? Nothing. That, Nathan Thompson, is the look of a man who has better things to do with his time than sit down at a conference and discuss things that you can't understand. 
Danny Faulkner, PhD astrophysicist, runs an observatory and profits from the lies. I've saved this one for this particular moment. And here you have it, pot calling the kettle black. Profiting off lies? Let's ask Witsit Getsit what he thinks about profiting off of lies. Hmm? Tune into Mondays as the plot thickens for the full story. There we go, two more human pieces of poo wiped in paper, thrown in a toilet, and hopefully when we hit that flush button they go away. I doubt it. Like herpes, they'll be back. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, hit that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down in the comment section below. If you didn't, thumbs down is perfectly okay too. But also, leave me a comment letting me know what you didn't like. I had way too much fun with this one, so we're going to end it here. As always, I'm Johnny O, and don't forget, finger guns, baby.